Welcome to Mark D. Maker. Today we'll be carving a little fox. This is part two. All right, so I've done a little bit more work to the fox, especially in here since our last video. I've just carved out a little bit in there. Not much. This is where we're at right now. Now, what you can see here is his, his face is flat right across here. And what our aim to do is to make it more three-dimensional, carved to the round. So looking at it from the front, you would think that the furthest, the widest part of the cheeks are here. They're not. They're way back here, almost behind the ear. This is, this is where this fur comes back and out. So going forward, this comes forward and around. It would be a very easy mistake to make looking at it from the front because it looks okay from the front, but when you look at it from the side, you can say that this is just not right. So we'll take a little bit off from the, the sides here. Knife's much sharper since I stropped it. This is called the paring cut. Much like peeling, peeling a potato. That sounds like that's a crow. Very smart birds. Crows and ravens, very, very smart birds. Scientists were comparing crows and ravens to uh, having the intelligence of like a chimp. Um, and when you talk about their ability to use tools or even make tools, there's documentation of both crows and ravens making their own tools uh, to get things, to get food. Bending pieces of wire around so they can reach down, make a hook and bring things out of um, a bottle or a jar. And so they compare that to the intelligence of about an eight year old. Okay, now you can really start to see a little difference here. And I'm gonna carve to that center line. So I'm gonna keep on going. I'll redraw the eyes in later. But here again, the center line, critical. Always should have a center line. when you're looking for symmetry. So I wanted to share this little tip with you. When stropping, I've used about every kind of strop that's available that you can buy commercially. And this stuff is new to me. I tried this and five or six straps with this paste 
on a piece of leather and the blade's like a mirror, literally. It's so reflective and it polishes it so nicely and does such a nice job. This is the name of it. Both this piece of leather and, and this mirror paste was uh, $20, 19 and some change. And you can see this, this paste is, is wet. Um, it's an excellent strop. It makes for an excellent strop uh, and just does a job so quickly and so nicely I highly recommend it I watched a uh, an interview with a master wood carver he was Russian and he used this and within seconds he had a mirror finish on his chisels and it works Now I'm going to put a concave down either side of the fox's snout. if I can get this up in the camera so you can see it. See the concave on either side of the nose there. And add a little bit of a distinction for this line right here around the I don't know what that area would be it's above his eyebrows it's kind of like where our hairline would be and let's see if I got a v-gouge with me here's a v-gouge let's see what we can do with the ears here let's see how I'm bracing when I cut with all of these gouges I'm being very careful if if this slips it can only go so far I have it extremely braced which is limiting where it can go if it slips from years of practice. But you can do it right off the bat, get in the habit of, I call it building a bridge. Build a bridge, have support and you won't have to tell your stories of gouging your finger. So here's a cool little tool you can make yourself. It's nothing more than a dowel. This is a nail. I cut the head of it off up here, chucked it up in my drill and just drilled it into the edge in the, of the dowel. So the tip of the nail is just drilled down in there. I didn't pre-drill a hole, I didn't need to. Simply chuck up the nail and drill it into the dowel. Now with the head cut off, I filed it flat 
and took a Dremel tool and put a divot in it, hollowed it out. You can see it's got a little bit of a concave surface in there with a diamond bit on a Dremel all the way down to where this edge here is sharp. And I use this as an eye tool. So if I'm placing an eye in something, I'll use the bottom of, of my fox here, and I'll take this tool, press it in, and just give it a couple of twists. And it'll give you a nice round, like an eye. So, and this is ingrain, so this is harder to do than if I were to put it here in the side grain. But you can see it gives you a nice round eye and then you can carve the eyelid into it, uh, paint it, whatever. Um, I've used this numerous times on carvings. It turns out real nice. Uh, you can polish in here with some polishing compound and make it even nicer. So it's nice and smooth. So you get a very smooth, perfectly round circle every time. You can use this for with a smaller uh, tool. You can make buttons. With this size tool, eyes. This is about the right size eye for this character. Um, I've used this in a bear before and the eyes came out perfect. So something to keep in mind, I was thinking about making these and offering them up for sale. Let me know what you think. If I make them, do I have an audience to buy them? We'll see. Let me know in your comments. Be sure to check the links below to have access to, I think, Therefore I Make t-shirt. Here I'm going in with the eye tool that I made and just pushing in and giving it a twist. And the, the twisting actually burnishes it and can give you a, a nice shiny finish. Uh, makes it very easy to paint. Makes for a real nice eye. So here I'm going in with the V gouge, just putting the lines around the eyes here and on the upper part of the forehead. Most of the detail is going to be paint with this little guy. This is a carving knife that I made. Did a video on it. The video is called Make a $5 Carving Knife. Great little knife. Blades worked very, very well. It's very sharp. I recently stropped it with that uh, mirror polish and it did beautifully. Now the thought process behind where to end the carving, where to stop taking away wood, um, is, is simply I look at the carving, compare it to the reference, um, and I ask myself where can I improve this? Can I make it better? Uh, when you get to the point to where you don't think you can make it any better, you're done. Well, here I'm just carving in a little separation between the tail and the body. And, uh, part of the tail is going to be the same color as the body, so you do need that shadow uh, 
that's a, a pretty deep gouge or cut to create the distinction between the two and you're relying on the shadow there to create the separation. So just as I mentioned before, here's the reference material and the carving and to me uh, the muzzle needs a little bit more work. It needs to be a little bit more uh, distinct I see that the reference is a little different than what I currently have, so uh, that prompts me to do a little bit of work on it. And it's starting to look a little bit better. A little bit more like the reference material. I will round the edges with sandpaper. I did do a lot of sanding on this piece, um, but I, I'm sparing you the uh, drudgery of watching me just sit there and sand. Although sanding is a valuable cutting tool. All right, so we're about ready to go back to the studio and put a little bit of paint on this guy. All right, we're all ready to put some paint on this little guy. This is the wood putty here. And because of that plastic wood will absorb paint at a different rate, then the rest of the, the wood, this is basswood, I will be using a gesso, that's what's in this bottle right here, and give this a primer coat, and then we'll put the paint on. I would usually take my paints and just thin them down real thin and use it like a stain. But since we have this, which will make it a different tonal value, um, we'll just, we're just gonna use solid paint. All right, so I usually start off with a little flow aid or flow medium, a couple drops in the water, a couple drops on my plastic plate, and my styrofoam plate. There's a couple of drops right here. That just helps the paint flow a little better. Now you want to avoid these little crumblies. See that? That gets in your paint and uh, it becomes a headache to deal with. So you really want to avoid that. Maybe wipe off the the uh, nozzle before you pour your paint out. <clears throat> Always wash your brush. Wash your brush first, get it nice and wet. It has flow medium in it as well. And if I'm going to uh, use gesso, usually I put it on pretty thick. Now, if I'm doing a bird that has a lot of detail, I will water this down to the consistency of skim milk, really, really thin. A lot of water and flow medium, because you don't want to cover up all the details that you spent hours burning in. So I start off with a little pumpkin spice color and a little burnt sienna and white. And so we have our first layer of color on here being the orange. 
very pale orange. I lightened it up a lot with the white and then came in with a just a tad bit darker, just a little bit darker in the darker areas. And I'll continue to layer on paint. All right, so I've gone in and laid down another several different layers of color. A burnt sienna on the outside, which is a reddish brown. Did a wash. Black gloss for the eyes gray for the feet and then burnt sienna and black into the tips of the paws and wet washed it and we'll just keep doing some little bit of washes and we're gonna and we'll come in and do the highlights very last and blend the highlights into the rest of the paint and there we go I think I'm gonna call this one done for now I'll come back and do a little touch up but I'm gonna let them sit for a little bit and uh, look at them for a couple of days and I'll find areas like oh like this little area right here that I don't like and I'll come in and soften that up make it look better but that's usually how I do them. I'll get 90% of the painting done all at once and then uh, let it sit and come back and touch it up a little bit later. Don't forget to look in the descriptions below for links to my t-shirt and buy me a coffee. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.